Hello, this is Ty Anderson for Add an Express. In this video, I will show you how to take on the task of creating your first Office 365 SharePoint online solution. We'll cover both the development of a simple SharePoint ribbon extension, and then we'll finish by deploying it into a SharePoint online site collection. So first, let's start by creating a new project. And we're going to go to the Visual C Sharp node in SharePoint, and I'm going to select the ADX SharePoint ribbon, which is the project template type for the Add in Express ribbon designer, which, as you may or may not know, greatly simplifies creating custom SharePoint ribbons. And we'll just call this my first Office 365 project. And we'll say OK. Doing so opens up the new SharePoint Ribbon Designer Project Wizard, which the first thing it wants to know is what is the local site that we will use for debugging, and it defaults to, since I'm using a SharePoint server, it defaults to the local host name of my SharePoint server, which is SPF-Dev. And then what is the name for the SharePoint Ribbon UI feature? And I'll just call this a, we're going to call it New Task. And then... What is the trust level for the site? Because this is an Office 365 solution, we need to deploy it as a sandbox solution and then click Finish, which will cause Visual Studio to go ahead and create the project for us and stub out all of our objects. Now this solution is going to contain just one custom ribbon with a couple of controls, a label and a text box, and then a button. And what it will allow us to do is to create tasks just using the ribbon inside of our tasks library. So let's go ahead and get started with that. We'll open up in the designer, which opens up for us automatically once created. Uh, in the designer, I need to do a couple things first. And the first is to add the ADX SP ribbon tab object, which when I do so, we get the object in the visual designer or in the designer surface. But then down here in the visual designer, we see the tab object and then we see its visual representation. And to then begin to drop more controls on there, I can click in the node down here in the visual designer, and then I can create a group. And notice that none of these controls are lit up really until I hit the group and then move down to it, which will then light up all these controls because these controls are now in context and available for inclusion within this group. And so I will start and I still have trouble finding some of these. There's the label, which is what I want there. And then I'm going to add my text box. And then I also want a button. And then in between it all, to make it just a little bit nicer looking, is I'm going to put a splitter control. And I want that splitter control to be between the text box and, oops, I did a split button. I did not want a split button. I'll delete it just by right clicking and clicking delete and I'm going to add the right button which is the ADX SP ribbon button control now since I did that it was it wasn't necessarily by plan but it works out for us because now I can show you how to move these around uh, just by right clicking them and saying move up and I didn't really want to do that I had them where I wanted but oh well it works so what I have here is I have the label the text box the splitter and the button all lined up right where I want them and now that we have these controls, let's just go through them and give them some nicer names. And actually, let's start with this ribbon tab. And I'm not worried about the name nearly as much as I'm worried about the captions. And we'll just name this Quick Tasks for the caption. And you notice over here in the visual designer, it changes for us just right there. Now we can go ahead too and make sure that the item type that we display it only for the task lists and so that it won't display all the time it just become visible when we're looking at a task list inside of SharePoint online and then for the ribbons um, for list view that's fine we'll just show it in the list view we don't care about the edit form, edit form or the new form as it would be a little bit redundant so then now let's move over here to the label and we'll change this to enter or actually let's do this input text or task title we'll say okay and then here we don't want to do anything but for the separator nothing and the button we do let's change the button to create task and it's display mode let's change it to image 32 and caption and then I want to add 
a, an image to it. But we'll see here, we need first an image list before we add an image. So I will go to the toolbox and we'll do all Windows forms inside of the toolbox and look for the image list that I'll drag right here. Now for this image list, we need to configure it so that its size is 32 by 32. So 32 and 32. Then for its image collection, we'll click in here and in the image collections editor, we'll click add. And then uh, as luck would have it for me, I'm already in my Visual Studio 2010 image library, my objects, PNG format, Win Vista, and I am after this 005 tasks, 32 by 32, 72 image. It'll look just quite right when, when we put it as the button image over here on the ribbon tab. And while I'm here, let's go ahead and change the caption for the group. And I'll call this quick task actions, which implies that there's more than one action, but really we just have one, but it sounds nice. Quick task actions. Next, I'll click the task button again, and we can move back down to the image list, and we'll assign it the image list one object as the image list. And then for our image, we'll do the one and only one we have. And we see now we have a perfectly nice little create task uh, and along with a nice looking task looking type image. We're almost ready to do a little bit of code, but let's change this text box to a different name, just something a little easier, like uh, say TXT new title. There we go. And now what we can do is I'll click on this task button and we can move over in the properties window to the events where we have JavaScript events, and this is the type of event that we want to use for the sandboxed solution. And so for the on-click event, I'm just gonna double click in here to stub out the events that we need. I'll hide those windows and let's get started coding. So the first thing we're going to do is actually minimize here, and I have some notes with some path references uh, to some files that's going to allow us to do some IntelliSense here. I'm going to copy them and up here we'll just right click and do paste. And so these files, uh, just knowing where they are and including them like I've done here is going to give me a little bit of nice little JavaScript IntelliSense. It's not perfect but it, it's, it's not bad either. So we're going to start out and the first thing to do is to grab the actual text box where we enter the title and we're going to do this by calling this find control and we'll say text new title then I want to create a uh, just a, a boolean and I want to say this is false so it has text equals false and so I can now use this just to kind of determine whether or not I've got text and uh, first thing I'll say is if oops if text box is not null, then we'll take some action. And that action is going to be first to create an object called text, which will equal text box dot text. And if that's the case, then we know that has text is true. So then if text is not equal to null and is not a empty string then let's take even more action which actually here I want to put my has text here I kinda of jumped the gun I got a little too eager and what we'll do is we'll say we'll create a context object which is going to be our SharePoint context so we get that by calling SP client context get current. Now, if I didn't include these references up here, I wouldn't have had that nice little IntelliSense. So I highly recommend doing this when you're developing uh, with SharePoint. Now we want to get our web. We do that by calling context get web. And just like that, we have our web. And then last, let's get our list 
which in this case I want to use the web object. I want to say get lists. And we'll call get by title. And in this case, I'm going to hard code it to task. So this has to be a task list on our SharePoint site that is named tasks. Now we'll create a new item called the list item creation info object, which will be a new SharePoint list item creation info object or information object. Now we can get down to the business of what we really want to do. We have all these objects, we have our list, um, we have our list creation info, and we can use this object, this list item creation info object, to create a new item, which in this case would be a new task item. So we'll say new item equals list add item list item creation info, and then we'll say new item. set item and then we'll, what we'll do is we'll pass it the title property and then we'll pass the value which in this case is the text object we created earlier that has the value entered into our text box with this information we can now then call the update method and then last of all we want to use our context object and we will create or we'll execute a query so we'll say context execute query async and then what we'll do is we'll pass two delegate functions that we're going to create as soon as we write this bit but the first thing to do is to pass them both and we'll say function create delegate we'll pass it this class and then the name of the function method which will be on update so that's one delegate function and this is the one that will be called if we successfully update the new task or create the new task so then let's call one more which will be function create delegate and again we'll pass this class and on this case we'll call on fail and now let's create our delegate functions first is the function on update which is going to take the sender as the first argument and then just an arguments object and we're going to call the SharePoint UI notify and then add notification method and we'll say true and what this function will do is if created successfully uh, up here in this execute query it will call on update and on update will then call the add notification method of the SharePoint notification class and say task created successfully and then make it sticky and what this does is create just a little uh, UI element in the top right hand corner that displays this it's unobtrusive or non non intrusive unobtrusive um, just a nice way to give feedback to the user that it was created so now let's create our last function, which, on, which is called onFail. It has the same arguments as onUpdate. And for this function, I want to make a more obtrusive or more annoying uh, alert so, or you know, display. I want to actually do a, a, a message box pop-up style. So we'll just call a JavaScript alert, and we're going to say failed to create task. and we'll call args get message and now we're ready to test uh, although just one slight little thing to fix here there we go so now what I can do is I can hit the start debugging or the F5 button and SharePoint will deploy to my local site here or act, activate the solution and then open up Internet Explorer uh, pointing to that site. And so I just need to log in here and hit remember my credential, say OK. 
and we don't have my tab showing, which is what we expected. It should only show for our tasks. So if I click to like shared documents, yeah, it's not showing. That's great. Calendar, not showing. Perfect. Now if I go to tasks, it better be there. Yep, quick task. There it is. So I can hit quick tasks. Uh, I need to enter in, say, a new, Ty's new task. And if I don't hit enter here, there won't be any text value in the text box. It's a quirk about developing with SharePoint. Uh, you actually have to enter or, or click or press the enter key. And so I do that, although there's no there's nothing that changes in the in the video. You won't notice anything. But I did hit the enter key, which gives that text box a value. And I can now click on the create task button. And we'll see over here the task created successfully. Now, I could just be lying because the page I didn't have it refresh automatically but if I go ahead and click the refresh button we'll see Ty's new task voila just like that so let's close everything's working just right and let's move on to deploying to Office 365 deploying is somewhat simple I just need to move over to my solution explorer here and I want to Make sure that my project is the active object in Solution Explorer. And then inside of the build menu, I can say package. And so I'm going to create a package. And we'll see that the package was built successfully. And I, for just sake of convenience here, let's see if I can uh, open the folder in Windows Explorer. So now if I go to my bin and into debug, uh, we see that I have a .wsp file. I'm going to copy and paste, the, or I'm going to copy this path. And if I now go to my SharePoint Online site, which is right here, I have this in SharePoint Online, and I can go to the, my, my main site, which I just call Projects. I can go to Site Actions, go to Site Settings, and then in the Galleries portion and say Solutions, all I need to do is one I gotta click on this page to get the uh, the library tools to show up for me there we go and then say upload solution and I can browse I'll select my WSP file say open and then say okay now it comes up gives me a nice warning I need to only activate solutions that I trust and I built it and so I somewhat trust myself but we see, you know, the name, the solution ID. I didn't give it a title or description, and that's all okay. I am going to go ahead and say activate. All right, so now uh, the dialog box goes away, and we see that our solution is now active, and I should be able to go right over here to my tasks folder. And all right, we see quick tasks, and I can say ties quick task demo, and I better hit that enter, enter key or it will not work there we go and say create task and alright task created successfully I'm going to refresh and what do you know so now you see how easy it is to, to create SharePoint online solutions and then plus two if you're looking to create custom ribbons I highly recommend using the add-in express ribbon designer as it greatly simplifies the task I mean just try doing this ribbon XML on your own instead of just drawing controls but like I said this video just walks you through creating a solution in Visual Studio debugging it quickly in on your local SharePoint system and then walk you through what to do in terms of getting it deployed onto your Office 365 SharePoint Online site collection. There's nothing to it, and with just this little bit, we're done.